Welcome to the Tracing Layer series. This is a four section series about the Tracing Layer system. And in this particular section, we are going to do this uh, ornamental lamp and we will do it about 99% of uh, total tracing. And then just at the very end, uh, we'll maybe just use a pure color of our choice here and there uh, just to give it some snap. Uh, just to be able to review how to turn off an influence layer and use the color we choose. The photograph we're going to be working with is right here, and that is the lamp guide. And I named it lamp guide. You will see here shortly why. But just to review, if you want to uh, import your image, go up to here, hit file, and then import image, and you will come up with this uh, box, and then uh, just go to wherever you have your images, uh, or image on your machine. I will double click this and what I will even do is just uh, double click it and then when it opens this particular picture will open up the exact same size as the canvas. Uh, now because the reason why is I made it uh, the 3600 by 2400 which is the 2.3 format of the 35 millimeter uh, camera I used. So it is just the exact same size as this particular picture. Now with that in mind, all I would have to do is single click it if I was happy where it was, or I could actually manipulate it, make it larger, bigger, uh, crop it before I set it in place. But just remember, if you start manipulating your picture too much, or if you enlarge it uh, too much, then you may start to get artifacts that may give you color that you don't want. So in that respect, maybe review the photo selection section, and that will help you uh, pick better photos to paint from because I think the better the photo, uh, the better your painting will be because I'm working at 300 DPI and that's that's pretty tight uh, as far as that goes. Now what it'll do is it'll just import uh, the picture, whatever the file name is, and this is the file name of this one. And what I will do is actually call that one uh, just tracing layer. And what we could do is assign this to our uh, tracing layer. Now this is uh, how we could do that is just by either going up and just hitting the T here uh, and that'll make it a tracing layer or you can actually go up to here and go into layers and then just click on this tracing layer and that will make it a tracing layer or you could also use your shortcuts uh, the keyboard shortcut for PC would be Alt-Shift-T, and for Mac it would be Option-Shift-T, and that will make this your tracing layer. Now, once you make this a tracing layer, then you don't really even have to have it on. Now, since it is the established tracing layer, we are going to be pulling our colors out of this particular photo, meaning this particular layer. But since it doesn't have to be on, we could turn it off. And then now it's off, but now what we're seeing is this lamp guide layer down here, which is this one right here. But we are going to do with this one is take it down to about 50. And you can make this whatever percentage you want, depending on the lightness or darkness of your photo. Uh, may make the difference there. But because it's uh, influenced also, that really doesn't matter because we're not going to be working on this layer at all. This is just our guide that we're beginning to be painting over. Now, these particular layers are the ones I'm going to be working on uh, to start with. And what they are is just, again, the chronological order of the photo itself. So, meaning that the back walls are just these walls back in here. And then this front wall right here is this front wall right through here that's kind of ahead of this back wall. So, when I go to paint over these edges, I kind of want my edges to overlap what's behind them. And then the lamp itself is in front of both of those. And then just for the sake of having the stone handrail at the very foreground, what I will do is paint that last. But then also I could tone down any one of these as far as like this front wall here. When I go to paint this handrail, I can even go back to the front wall and tone that down as far as opacity goes once I start painting it. And then I will be able to see my dark handrail again and then go back in and paint it. And then I could, of course, do that the same thing with the stone handrail and turn it down with the opacity and then be able to just go back in and paint over the handrail so I could see it and then uh, turn it back up to 100%, of course. But now what we will do now is actually go down here 
and we're just going to put in a new layer and call it pad and what I'm going to do is just show you give you a rough idea of how many different ways you could pull paint out of this particular layer here and then uh, this is just going to be our practice layer once we're done and once we show you what's going on uh, with the brushes and pulling colors out uh, then we will just delete this layer I did make this a layer for a specific reason also and that is that anytime you add a layer after you already assign the tracing layer it's going to come up as a non-influenced layer and that is important because then we wouldn't be pulling our colors out of our photograph anymore we would actually having to be picking our own colors so to make this an influence layer you could actually even just click it uh, right here on this button uh, or actually on this button up here you could turn it off and on and then also of course you could go up here into layer and click that off and on to make it an influence layer or turn it off and also uh, your uh, keyboard shortcuts which be PC would be alt shift I and for the Mac would be uh, option shift I but if I click on that again now it's an influence layer and now if I go back up we could see how we could pull color out of this and the size of the brush is kind of important only for one big reason and that is no matter what size brush you have you are actually only going to be pulling color out of where you touch down so wherever I touch down that's the color I'm going to grab and keep in mind uh, my settings uh, for my color picker are five by five uh, pixels which is the largest you can set it at but that's still an extremely small area that I'm working right now at 3600 by 2400 at 300 dpi so a 5x5 five five area is quite literally about 1 60th of an inch. So you're pulling out a very small section of where you're touching, especially if you start making much bigger brushes. So even though the brush is this big, only the very center where I'm touching down is going to grab that color. So if I go over here and grab this white, then I'm going to be painting white over everything and, and uh, not using the colors that are all available within that area. So in other words, we do have to make uh, the brush fit what we're painting. So if I go down here and paint these ornamental uh, frame uh, works in that hold the glass in place, then I have to uh, use that size of a brush, but then keep in mind, I'll zoom in even more, that if I hold this down, I'm only going to grab that color and it's going to stay that color until I let go. But now that I let go, I could still go back in and pull out new colors anywhere along that area. If there is different colors in there, it will grab it and then it will paint over what you already have. So you're never committing to any one color. You could just keep on daubing and re-grabbing and that will be the new color you grab. And then if you want to then blend these in then I could go straight to my blender and I will take it down in size and what it'll do is it will blend the paints I already have down but I won't be able to grab any new color which that way then I could soften up some areas or diffuse some of the brush strokes if I want to uh, and and knowing that I will not be grabbing uh, any new colors with a blender now the uh, any of these tools that will lay down uh, any type of color of value you could use to pull colors out of your photograph but the blender has uh, no effect whatsoever even if it's an influenced layer and remember for any reason if you want to use your own colors on a non-influenced layer by turning one of these buttons off uh, and leaving it off will be a non-influenced layer you would be on your own to pull your own colors out or to use your own colors but to do that if you want to use uh, the colors that are within the photo then just to review all you have to do is go down here and then just say create color set from image file and just say we want 25 colors and then find again that same area where you kept that same photograph and what it'll do is make you a custom palette of all the photo uh, photograph colors that are within that photograph then this way uh, you will have uh, the alike colors that you may need uh, of the variations uh, without very little mixing involved. 
uh, for that reason, uh, you would be able to then uh, go in and, and add your own colors if necessary on a non-influence layer. Otherwise, uh, you'll just be uh, pulling the colors out of your uh, tracing layer. Okay, now let's set up and get ready to paint. What I will do is actually get rid of this layer. And we are done with that. And then we can actually take it all the way back and fit it on screen. And just to briefly go over what I will start is probably up in this corner and do all that back wall first. And then do the front wall. And then again the lamp. And I will work on it uh, with various size brushes. And I may even introduce a couple of new layers. Uh, for example, the uh, joints uh, between the block. I might put a, a new layer above the back wall. And then that way, uh, if I want to do the joints, uh, it will still be behind everything else, but it will be on top of the wall. Then that way, if I want to adjust the joints here or there or blend them in a little bit or soften them, I'll be able to without destroying or changing or interrupting uh, my back wall layer. Uh, again, I try to use layers for myself uh, to my advantage. Uh, and then what we will end up with is just the stone handrail at the very end. And I will also be um, actually uh, explaining what I'm doing as I do it in the speed painting. And we also will stop here and there uh, just for a real-time update. So let's get started on the speed painting. Okay, I'm just starting up in the upper left-hand corner. Working in my lights and darks, whatever the photograph has to offer. Moving down in, I will just cover up this railing and I will reintroduce it later on its own uh, layer. Then that way I could turn down the layer that it's over uh, so I can actually see where it's at. I'll just turn down the opacity uh, and then that way it will reveal the, the railing exactly where it's at. Now blending in the colors and destroying some of the brush strokes I want to do that because I'd rather keep my hard edges where I want them. Right now there are many hard edges uh, throughout all the different brush strokes and softening them up will pr uh, preserve my hard edges for just where I want them. Now I turn down the opacity just to find that hard edge for the shadowed area of the back wall. And now just uh, finishing in the back wall, uh, I went ahead and uh, turned it down again so I could see my hard edges where I want them. And then now just working in uh, the shadow of the lamp itself. It is uh, on its own layers too. And all I did was stagger the uh, wall layers uh, so I could put the sections of the shadow of the lamp uh, on the uh, layer that's in front of the one behind it. Then that way, again, I could turn it down uh, and turn down the opacity. And then that way I could see where the actual uh, lamp shadow is. Right now I'm just diffusing uh, all the ledges and the darker areas foreground. Again, just to kill some of the brush strokes. Now I'll go ahead and just put in uh, the handrail on its own layer and uh, that will be it. Uh, this way I could see where it's going to be and you'll see it come alive when I turn the uh, opacity back up. Just an update uh, in real time, uh, just to go over some of the things that might happen a little too quick in the speed painting. I went ahead and added a layer uh, for the handrail down here, and that'll give me a couple of options. One of them is then I could go back to the back wall layer and work in behind it if I do want to touch anything up behind there, uh, or even just like since I created different layers uh, for these foreground walls, then I could go back in as you might have seen while I was blending, I went back in behind them. And that gives me the option of, of keeping my brush strokes broken up. Uh, and then also, more importantly, it also gives me the option of going back to the back wall and then changing the opacity so I can actually see where the handrail is exactly. Because that metal handrail is fairly fine. And to try and paint around it, uh, instead of doing that, uh, basically it's, it's uh, much easier uh, just to do it uh, the way we did it. And that way, uh, you'll be doing the photograph more precisely. Now, if you wanted to just freehand that handrail in or something along those lines, uh, that's obviously an option also. But keeping with that method, that is also what I did uh, with the lamp shadow itself. And what I did was I actually put the lamp shadow and started it on the actual front wall. And then that gave me the option of being able to turn down the opacity on the back wall also. And then when I do this section, of the shadow, I will actually put it 
on the stone handrail layer and then that way I'll be able to turn this layer down and to see where that shadow is exactly also because we are duplicating over the photograph and it, it's just much easier to be able to see where those edges are uh, and then what I will actually do is the lamp and uh, it will have all hard edges so hopefully it'll jump out at us nice now one thing we do need to go over and that is uh, down here in this corner we decided we're going to take this little light uh, corner of the wall out of it and it might be better off just uh, dark in here. Now we could do that a couple of different ways. Uh, once we start painting this in, we could use the, uh, the actual uh, stamper tool, the clone tool, to just take those brush strokes back over this area. Or uh, we can actually cut out a section and copy and paste it over there if you find a similar uh, value area of colors and, and, and value. Uh, or we can actually just turn off the influence layer of the back wall and then start using our own colors to just kind of uh, more or less scumble that over. Because keep in mind, if we do keep it an influence layer, then you're going to have to pull all of your colors from around it and then pull them across. Because remember, as long as we hold down until we let go, we're going to keep that same color. But what we might be doing is creating a linear pattern that might be a little wee bit too obvious as far as the crosshatch I had going all over everywhere. Uh, it's going to be a different look down here in the corner. And uh, for me personally, I would not want to uh, pull any uh, actual attention to just my brush strokes. Because when you have uh, big, heavy, gobby brush strokes in oils, uh, you might actually uh, attract attention to the brush stroke itself and not what the brush stroke is trying to represent. Uh, with that said, uh, we're going to go back in and finish uh, this painting up. And uh, we will also then uh, put in the uh, block joints, the mortar joints, uh, on its own layer also. That will be the very end. And that way, we'll also be able to feather those in uh, here and there. And just give like a hint or a rendering of some of the joints uh, as we go. But this will give us an, uh, an option, if we put them on our own layer, that we could adjust them, change them, erase some of them, and we won't be committing uh, into putting those in uh, as far as on the back wall layer. They will be on their own layer. Uh, let's go back in and get some more done. Okay, here I'm just working in the, uh, the shadow itself of the uh, lamppost. And again, I put it on its own layer so I could... Uh, uh, tone down the opacity of uh, the layers that are around it. Then that way I could see the edges of the shadow itself. And some of those edges I want real nice and sharp, so I want to see exactly where I'm going. Right now I'm just doing the real ornamentation of the lamp itself, and it has a pebble uh, finished glass on it that kind of refracts a light in a specific way. So sometimes if you know even uh, the exactly what you're doing, uh, as far as what type of object you're doing, it, it will help uh, actually uh, render the object better, knowing what the colors represent. And when I go back in and, and blend in some of these areas, I will leave some of the brush strokes here and there uh, very pronounced, just to have that oil painting look. Now when I'm going with the, uh, the patina, uh, the corroded uh, metal draining down onto the sandstone, it has a very linear pattern since it is a liquid running down. And what I will do is keep my brush strokes to that linear pattern uh, just to help uh, render that pattern the way it is. Now again, I'm just going to paint over that uh, railing that I will... Uh, repaint later and and turn the opacity away down on the painting layer that I'm painting right now. Soften up some of these edges and then just leave the paint strokes that I want and then I can always go back in and put some more in. This dark corner we're painting around that object we're going to take out with freehand here shortly. And then now I'm just going back in and putting in uh, the handrail. Right here is where I took out some of the handrail uh, that I, I just uh, broke away from the photo and chose to uh, make the uh, handrail more parallel uh, ends and edges uh, than, than it was. Now the joints on their own layer, that way I could change them if I need to. And that's it. 
Okay, that is the end of the speed painting. And uh, just to recap quickly, uh, I went ahead and copied over uh, three of those layers, uh, the three that I merged. Uh, then that way, if you ever want your uh, to give yourself an opportunity to go back and just clean things up uh, or just uh, rearrange things at a later time, it'll give yourself an option uh, to start previously in the painting. Again, that is just uh, if you're uh, in the phase of, of, of learning to paint also, the, the best is to try and give yourself as many options as you can. Uh, that way, uh, you again, go back. But now, uh, since I went ahead and put the uh, mortar joints, which is right here on their own layer, uh, we decided we are going to go down and finish this by hand. But then what I'll be able to do is go back in and finish this with just our own colors and that will be back down here. The stone handrail uh, layer is actually the back wall layer, the original back wall layer. So if I turn it off, that would be it. Uh, and then what I will actually do is just finish this up and paint on it. But what we could do is we'll turn off the influence layer and that's all you have to do. But now you could still trace as long as you could see what you're tracing, uh, whether you turn down the opacities of some of the layers or whether you could still see what would be considered your lamp guide, just your guide layer. And then you could still trace, but then you would just be on your own uh, when it comes to picking colors. Now, that's what I did very early in the uh, cardinal painting. When I uh, made the cardinal painting with freehand, I started very early with freehand. Uh, if you go back and review that particular um, section, what I did was I turned off the influence layers early, but then I also already had a base scumble coat down of colors, and that was it. I could not see uh, the, uh, the actual guide anymore. I was actually working off of the same picture on a different monitor. So just to answer some questions that were out there uh, previously, uh, as long as you have your influence layer off, you are on your own picking out your own colors, but then uh, you uh, may also be uh, on your own with freehand too if you're already this opaque paint and you have to start painting on your own. Now we are just going to cover this over. So being that we turn off the influence layer, we will probably use these four colors right here. This one, this one, this one and this one. And then keep in mind, all of these colors in here, you can actually go back in and just pick up the eyedropper and start picking some of these colors out of here if you wanna use those same colors also. But I'm just gonna go back in and just uh, manually pick the colors and we're just gonna scumble over that and blend this in and that will be it. Let's uh, do that right now. And I'm gonna make the brush a little bit bigger. And uh, what we'll do is now we already turned our influence layer off. So we are on our own. We will actually be using this color right here if we do. But I'm going to go down and pick this color. And then we'll start just down here. And then we can cross hatch them and mix them together. So that's no big deal. And then once we start blending. But now again, I'm using my own colors. So I can actually go back in and uh, change the colors around if I want to. And then uh, now that I have the mortar joints above this layer I'm working on, I don't have to worry about painting. I'll be painting in underneath them. So they will stay right where they're at. And we're going to go back to this color and get a little bit more darker color and just mix it in. And then that's it. And I will go right back to the blender. We're going to make it bigger. And I'm going to just soften these edges up a little bit. And again, I'll be working right underneath those mortar joints. We don't have to worry about those. And then obviously keep in mind, uh, once everything is done, you can merge all the layers together and then blend in even more uh, uh, of your colors or paint more of your colors, whatever you want to do, uh, when everything is all on the same layer. And that would be it there. That would be considered done. If I fit it on a screen, I do like it better without that little corner. Uh, this it, entire painting would probably be almost considered a chiaroscuro painting uh, with really uh, bright lights and, and real dark darks with a black lamp. And again, that's what we talked about at the beginning where uh, the black lamp is going to really jump out at you up, up against that light background. And then the same thing with this uh, right here. 
as far as this front wall, it being it's in the light also. And then the way the light is splashing on these back walls, it really makes some nice cuts uh, of different places. And then even the handrail, I, I often use the term of lost and founds. And what I mean by that is uh, a, a lost is a place like down in here where this handrail starts to blend in with the background and you completely lose it. But then the founds are like where this real dark handrail is up against a very light background. It'll tend to jump out at you and that will give a 3D effect. But then the, the lost tend to create a three-dimensional movement and starts tying the pieces of the painting together. Uh, but again, uh, we could go back over and do some different things and put uh, some uh, little gobs of paint here and there. But again, that would be uh, your artistic license to take it uh, wherever you want to from here. But we did this little wee bit freehand, and that's all we were going to do on this one was just a little wee bit. And that way, uh, uh, we uh, just reviewed how to turn off uh, the influence layer. And this painting would be considered done. But first, let's take a look at uh, even just the base of this picture, uh, the painting itself as far as the uh, front wall goes. And what I wanted to show you is just how loose it really is. It tightens up a little bit when you fit it on screen, but it is just really hunks of color of paint here and there that make up the painting itself. But what I wanted to show you more importantly was like, just say for example, this highlight right here on the lamp and then some of the streaks of the, uh, of the uh, patina fading and uh, dripping down onto the stone. Uh, the reason why is because I was very selective when I was blending. I just wasn't randomly blending. I wanted to blend in certain areas for certain reasons. And uh, that is to leave certain hunks of paint here and there, such as this highlight or some of the, uh, the hard blues uh, or purples on the railing to give it that iron steel forged look. Uh, even the same thing over here. There's a little bit right here of a, of a bluish purple. And then... Uh, then also, again, just the different colors uh, that make up all of the, uh, uh, the actual patina uh, draining down off of the copper. Uh, but again, like I said, uh, it, it's just to show you uh, that um, it, it's really just hunks of color. Uh, that once I uh, fit it back on screen, it tightens up a little bit more and it, it doesn't have that uh, individual paint stroke uh, look to it. Uh, but with that said, uh, this painting is finished now. Uh, we'll go on to a new picture and discuss some advanced techniques uh, that we could do uh, with the tracing layer. Okay, we opened up a new photo here. And this is just a close-up of water lily. Uh, plenty of color, plenty of contrast in the bright sunlight of midday. Uh, something we could use to our advantage uh, for a couple of different options here. Uh, let's take a look at them now. Uh, the first one we will use is actually uh, use the masking layer along with the tracing layer. But first what I have to do is get a little bit of this flower done and it will be on its own uh, layer. But what I will do is again the same thing. I will go up here and assign the tracing layer to the uh, tracing layer uh, right there. And then now that one's locked and I could turn it off. And then I already made my water lily guide. Uh, about 40 percent just made a little bit lighter than the last time but again you can make it as any adjustment you want depending on uh, what the photograph is more importantly now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just get some of this flower done through speed painting and then we'll see how we could uh, use a few more options to help us uh, get a painting done several different ways so uh, let's move into the speed painting okay again I'm just following the uh the shapes of the petals, uh, painting the, the back ones first and then overlapping the closer petals uh, just with the brush strokes. And I will just lay in the colors for now and then go back in and blend the brush strokes a little bit. Uh, the only difference is this time I'm using a blending brush uh, that actually has more of a brush stroke uh, streaky pattern versus just uh, the uh, soft uh, brush I used uh, the last time in the uh, lamp post. Uh, now we'll just move in and see what we could do with the turquoise layer. Okay, uh, we got enough of the speed painting done. What I wanted to do is just get uh, the out, outer perimeter done and uh, just to give us something to work with. But right now what I wanted to do was if I wanted to make this a masking layer, 
Uh, that'll give us a couple of options uh, if we do that. But first we need to see uh, just how well we painted it in and just to see if there's actually any painting missing, uh, paint itself. And there's a very basic way we could check that. And what we'll do is just go down to this layer and since uh, it'll create a layer above that one, a new layer, we're gonna call this one Cobalt Turquoise. Now, the reason for that is what I need is a color that doesn't have anything to do with the painting at all. So what I will do is I'll stay on this layer, I'll go up and get my fill bucket, go down and grab my Cobalt Turquoise right here, and then just fill the background. But now you could see that there is some areas where I missed as far as uh, where there's no paint at all. So uh, whether you use a masking layer or if you even use the transparent lock, uh, that would make a difference. If you use a masking layer, then uh, color would be able to get into those areas and contaminate that part of the flower, wherever you see uh, cobalt turquoise. Uh, with a transparent lock, uh, you might start painting back over the flower, but you wouldn't be able to paint these areas that are cobalt turquoise because they're not already covered with paint. Uh, so for that reason, we'll go back over and I'll just get all of those areas out here uh, just in a speed part. And what I will do is leave the cobalt turquoise there and then go back over and either repaint or reblend those areas just so we don't have any cobalt turquoise uh, showing uh, in the flower that we have done so far. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, this would be the best time to note that as long as my tracing layer is the original photograph, that is where all the colors are coming from. So then I could slowly work over and cover all the turquoise color. Okay, now that I went back in and just uh, uh, filled in the gaps on the flower of what I had done, uh, it would be a pretty clean layer to use for a transparent lock or a masking layer. Uh, I'll go back up and close these out. We're not using those at all right now. But what I can do is I will turn this off. And now here's our flower. So keep in mind, if I make this a masking layer now, again, I could either go up here and just hit M uh, or go up here to the uh, layer drop down and then either just hit click on masking fluid layer or uh, Alt Shift M for the PC users and Option Shift M for the Mac users. Since I'm already here, I'll just click on that and make it a masking layer. Then now it will be locked. And now he, the only thing to consider is when this is a masking layer, you could use a masking layer for whatever reasons you need to with the tracing layer, but then they share the influence layers. And what I mean by that is if I click off of the influence layer, then this layer will not pertain to the mask anymore. I would be able to paint right over my masked area because it's not influenced anymore. But I would also be on my own with my own colors because now it's not an influence layer for a tracing layer either. So that's just something to consider that as long as you uh, have your influence layers, it will be a tracing layer and a masking layer in use also. So if this is your mask layer, then this is the layer that will be protected, which is the flower that I have painted so far. Now, with that said, if I say, for example, go up to the green pads and then actually uh, want to paint something, I can actually go back in here. I will grab a brush, make it a little bit bigger, and I will zoom in a little bit. And then if I start grabbing some of these greens uh, from, from the pads, and pull them in, that will be a protected layer. Now keep in mind, this green pad is above the flower, so it should be painting on top of the flower, but since it's actually a mask layer, it will actually be protected. Now the only difference is, is you can see what I'm doing here to a certain extent, that I'm pulling all my colors and going back into the flower, because if I do that up here in the water, it will still work. But keep in mind, if I start from the flower and go out, I'll still be able to pull colors out of the flower and then into my other area as far as whatever area I'm working. But it, it will still protect the flower area. I won't be able to paint 
on the flower except for the areas that are not protected or previously painted. So I can't paint anything on here. It's not going to paint since it is a protected mask area, but I will still be able to pull colors out of that area. So for that reason, I would have to actually keep pulling colors into that area. But this is just another option that if you wanted to use the masking layer along with the tracing layer, for whatever reason, you would need it to be masked any area that your painting would be masked, uh, you could use the masking layer along with that. Now, uh, if I go back up here, and then I can even uh, erase this out, since it's a protected area, I'll just get rid of that paint, and that's it. I could start all over again uh, with that cleaned out area. But what I can also do then is just keep in mind, say for example, you even wanted to keep this flower the way it was and keep it as a masked layer, then you could even import another photograph and put it in over the uh, the water lily guide layer here I have, you could then put another layer above this one and then work from that photo uh, and, and uh, pull colors from it, providing that you make it the tracing layer. So as long as you pull the, uh, the colors from your tracing layer, then that could even be a different photo. Because here's a spoiler alert for the next set of options. You can create... Uh, any layer, the tracing layer, as many times as you want back and forth. So that can also help you as far as uh, if you want to change things up and not necessarily just have to use one photo. Okay, we could use more than one photo if you want to get creative, but we could also use the same photo. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go down. First, I'm going to open this group up and I'm going to re-salvage the flower layer of what we already have uh paint it and I'm going to take it off the masking layer so I could slide it up here above the green pads in this group and then I will turn these on and this is going to be the group we're going to be working with now and we're done with this group so I'll close it down and turn it off but now that we have uh, this layer up here this is the same photo we were working from but what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to duplicate it over and then now here's a duplicate of the exact same layer. But what we're going to do is go up into filter and then hit desaturate. And we're going to make a black and white version out of the exact same photo. And then uh, that looks pretty good right there. I don't want to lose that bright uh, sunny day look of mid-afternoon in the black and white values. So I will actually apply that. Now we have a black and white version and a color version. Now, we know that we don't need to have either one of these on if we use them as tracing layers, but what we could actually do is uh, make either one of those the tracing layer at any time. In photography, uh, a lot of photographers like to work with uh, black and white and color in the same photo. They'll either make an object in color or black and white, and then the rest of the photo just the exact opposite. So if we have a full color flower, and then we can actually make the rest of the background in black and white. Now, again, that could be done in any photograph uh, with any subject. So now if we uh, go up to the uh, tracing layer here, but in the black and white version, we know how to make it the tracing layer. So we just click on the T and now I would be pulling my colors out of the black and white version. So if I go down to the green pads uh, layer and just say, for example, I go up here and grab a brush I'll make it a little wee bit bigger. And then if I start working in, the water is the darkest part of that color. Here's the black and white version. Now, these are the colors we would be pulling out of. And then, obviously, we would still have a full color uh, flower. So if I turn that off, and if I start grabbing the blacks of the water, it's the darkest part of the flower. And I could start painting this all in and make the entire background black and white or any parts of it. And the reason why, again, is I could take the actual uh, layers and make them the tracing layer anytime I want, as many times as I want. So if I want to go back into the color layer and make it the tracing layer again, now all I got to do is make it a T, and then that's it. It's now the tracing layer. And if I go back to any influence layer 
or a new layer that I create and assign an influence layer to it, then that's the colors I would be pulling out of the full color. If I go back up to the black and white version and take it back to the tracing layer and make it the tracing layer, now again, I will actually go back to the green pads and then I will actually be pulling my colors or values out of the black and white version. Uh, meaning that I can actually then create parts of the photo in full color and other parts of the photo in black and white. Uh, I go to my blender and I will actually go back to the uh, one I was using previously. Make it a little bit bigger and I could soften this up and then just bring that down and I would be getting rid of any brush strokes that I have. But again, uh, this is another option that if you want to combine uh, your photograph and combine it with a black and white version and then paint both of them, then you can actually then have, uh, go back up to the brush and, and go back to these lily pads here and I would only be painting them in the black and white version. And the key thing to remember here is we can assign one layer, the tracing layer, as many times as we want to as many different layers as we want. But then obviously we can only have one tracing layer at a time. But the amount of times we do it is uh, up to us. And then we can actually just color this in. And I'm trying to lift up and put down as many times as I can. Then if I go straight into my blender, I have my toggles again set. The front toggle, the front toggle is uh, a color picker. And the back toggle uh, goes right to my blender. So when I do paint freehand, uh, that is pretty quick for me as to how I can change uh, my colors and then also start blending. But here again, uh, we could do... Uh, the tracing layer, assign it to one layer as many times as we want. Now, keep in mind, uh, that can even uh, open up one last set of options, and that would be for those who paint in the grayscale uh, method, then you can actually uh, just paint in your whole entire photograph in gray values, and then go back to your color uh, uh, layer, and assign it the tracing layer, and then start going over uh, lightly, change the opacity of your brush, and then going over lightly over the gray values uh, with, with the color. And then you'd already have your shading already there uh, if you choose to go that route and create a little bit more of a, of a unique look versus just taking the colors completely from the photograph. Now, with that said, uh, that is the end of this section, and uh, hopefully it helped you in some way, shape, or form. And uh, if you do get a chance to use a tracing layer system, uh, hopefully this gave you some options uh, just to help your creativity along. And hopefully this will help you. And until we see you out in the field or in the studio again next time, thanks for watching. Bye for now.